we now continue with uh, the second video. Uh, we are now looking at pointers to scalars, which is variables that hold only one value. But we're going to look at a unique feature of pointers and that they allow you to create variables on the fly. And we're going to look at the use of functions with pointers. Okay. Uh, we saw in the previous examples that if I have a pointer, I can access a memory cell by using the dereferencing operator or the star. And that has two interpretations. When a variable is required, the star means the memory location pointed to by the pointer. When I need a value, it means the value that's stored in the memory cell that the pointer points to. Okay, now I want to introduce, so we saw this uh, in the previous example. Now we want to show you that pointers can be used as parameters. So here is a function, read. It takes a pointer, an integer pointer, as a parameter. The thing to note is when you pass a pointer, it is always by reference. What does that mean? It means that you can either change the value of the pointer or you can change the value that the pointer is pointing to. Let's look at this function. What's going to happen? We're prompting for a value and we'll, we will read the value and store it where? Into the memory location that the parameter IP is pointing to. What does that mean? It means that when you call this, you must pass an address. Okay. What is a pointer? It's a variable that holds an address. So we can call the function read and pass it the pointer. The pointer has been initialized to reference the um, value of x. I think we have a program over here for this. So here's the program we want to do. x starts off being 5. We're going to declare an integer pointer, have it point to x. So at this point, we have two ways of getting to the value that's stored in x. We either get through it using the variable name x, or we get through it by way of the pointer. Here's the pointer. We can dereference the pointer. It goes and finds the value that's in the cell. So when we run this program, we expect that it's going to say, the value of x is 5, which is also the value that the pointer is pointing to, which is 5. And we will see that as we change the value of the memory location, either by uh, using the pointer or by using the variable, they both continue to point to the same value. So let's run that quickly. When we run this, what do we have? We begin by saying the value of x is also the value that xp points to. We're going to enter value 17. And after we read both x, the value of x is 17, the value that the pointer points to is 17. We're going to put in 43. And this time we are going to we just call the function read. Remember what the read does? It prompts for a whole number. It reads it. When we call it, we are passing the pointer xp, which points to the value of x. And when we do that, we see that after the call, after the call, um, we have a new value of x. Let's change this just briefly and call this this time a different way. Let's call it this time by passing the address of x. Right. And we expect it to work just as well.
So enter a value 17, enter a whole number 43, enter a whole number 72. All right. So let's reiterate. The function read requires a pointer. You can pass it a pointer variable or you can pass it an expression that gives you the, an address of an integer variable. Got this done. Go, 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 go. All right. Now we're going to talk about dynamic memory allocation because this is the one of the strengths of using pointers. So in this example, we have three pointers that have not been initialized. We can initialize the pointer. Um, by allocating the new statement says allocate a new memory cell that can hold an integer value and return the address of it. So as a result of this assignment statement the pointer XP1 will point to an uninitialized memory cell. The second statement looks like the other but it says give me a new integer and initialize that integer to 3. You may recognize that in this instance we are using the int data type constructor because we're giving it a value. So xp2 is pointing to an integer value 3. What are we doing here? We're saying that let x, the pointer xp3 have the same value as xp1. What's xp1? What kind of value does it have? It has the address of an integer. So address can be assigned to an address. So in effect, both XP1 and XP3 point to the same memory cell. Notice up here that we say we have a memory cell that's uninitialized. So right now there's no value in the memory location that both X1 XP1 and XP point to. If we were to read a value into that cell, we can read it using the pointer XP3. We can dereference it and say read a value into the memory location that XP3 points to. Can we not do the same by putting XP1? And why is that? Because they both are pointing to the same memory cell. So if I were to output uh, this expression here, I would output the value that's stored in XP1 and followed by a comma, followed by the sum of the value that XP2 points to and the value that XP3 points to. All right. The key thing to note is that these memory cells that we have, all these values, these two new cells that we have, are only accessible through a pointer. There is no variable associated with them. There is no int variable. There's only pointers. Let's see what this code looks like. I, here's some code that manipulates the example that we just saw. And let's take a quick look at what that looks like when we run it. So what are we printing? We're printing out the pointers. Notice that the pointer for uh, XP1 and XP3 are the same. That is, they point to the same memory location. Notice also they have the same value. What is this value? Well, this value is kind of a nonsense value because didn't we say that XP1 points to an uninitialized memory cell? which must have this value in it. Now we're going to enter value 177 
And again, we're reading a value into the memory cell that XP3 points to. But again, XP3 and XP1 point to the same value. So when we print them again, we see the 177 occurring two times. Now here's, I think this is the, nearing the final slide. Whenever you allocate dynamic memory, you also have the ability to release it when, when it's no longer used. The operator for that is called delete. And you provide a pointer. And this means delete the dynamic memory that is being pointed to by this pointer. Let's see why this is necessary. If you don't delete, then we have a situation called memory leakage where you're using up space but not giving it back. So XP points to memory cell containing four XP2 is pointed to a cell containing 3. I'm causing XP3 to point to the same memory cell. Now take a look here. If I use this statement to say give me a new integer memory cell and have XP point to it, notice that XP must relinquish its pointing to the cell that contains the 3. So it's almost like this, the memory cell that used to contain the 3 still contains the 3, but you can't get to it anymore because X2 is pointing to something different. Right? If I were to do a delete XP3, what does that mean? It means to re delete or release the memory cell that XP3 points to. What do you remember about XP3? three and XP one, they both point to the same memory cell. So in deleting XP three, we are in effect um, affecting XP two. So let's take a look at some code that looks at this. Okay. Uh, I probably won't go into detail. Take a little time to read this and see what's happening here. What you will see is that as we run this, the pointers are all pointed to legitimate values until we start deleting. Then all of a sudden, XP1 has garbage in it. If XP1 has garbage, XP3 will also have garbage because they are pointing to the same thing. So let's run this program quickly. So we see that we go from values 431 to values where we have um, at this point what we've done is we've reassigned XP2. We've made it point to a new value that's uninitialized. And finally we delete XP1 which um, notice that the pointers do not change but what they're pointing to certainly change used to be a 4, now it's really pointed to garbage. Boom. Okay. The fact that you have a dynamic memory that nothing is pointing to is calling a dangling reference. And it's, and it's not good. Alright, we're going to stop there.